And so as we gather here this morning at the feet of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, I declare you cannot deny the truth of the fact that this might be the last message you hear. None of us is guaranteed tomorrow. And you might think, well, that's dark. I don't need to listen to this. That is true. You do not need to listen to this. You have a choice you can make. You can get up and leave the church before you hear the message. You can click away. And the question is not whether you think the preacher qualifies. The only question you should ask yourself this morning is what is preached? Is it true? Or do you condemn the truth without even checking to see if it was so? If you profess to be a man or a woman of God, you need to know who the God is you serve. What His will for your life is this morning. And if you are man enough, and I challenge every man and woman this morning, to be bold and endure. And if it is a truth that is uncomfortable in your life, I want you to say hallelujah. But most will not. Because if what you hear is the proclamation and declaration of the word of God, your problem is not with me, your problem will be with God and few, few will be convicted of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, convicted enough by the Holy Spirit to repentance. You might feel this morning. Well, I'm part of a very large church. We must be right. We must be right. I declare to you this morning, if you are sitting in a church that does not wholly proclaim the statutes and ordinance of God, you are not sitting in a church. If you are sitting in a church that focuses on what you can get out of your religion, you are not in a church. But you are alive because you've heard these words this morning. Before we go and turn to Scripture, Let's bow our hearts to the Lord. And Father, we ask you, Lord, that through your word, that we may honor your word and glorify Christ. And even though we preach a message that has become so unpopular, Lord, you know whom you have chosen to truly hear. You have chosen the deaf that you will make them hear again. You have chosen the blind that you will make see. Because, Lord, we know this message this morning are not for those who publicly reject you. The message this morning 
are not for those, Lord. Not for the atheists, not for the Satanists, even though we pray that you reveal yourself to them, Lord. But this message this morning is for the many, many, many professing Christians that are on the way to hell. Lord, please use me this morning as a vessel to proclaim your truth. In the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And before I start, I want to declare something. Because let me tell you, when we carry the name of the Lord, brother, sister, we will be held at a higher standard to God. Every word that comes out of my mouth this morning. We go to Psalm 19. As our declaration this morning from verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, this morning, I want to proclaim something to you. That we are all that is drawing breath in this world are marked. We carry a mark. And we are marked to life or we are marked for death. There is no middle, there is no half mark, and there is no full That is what is the present necessity this morning. You think about it. What is the most important, the most urgent thing we are to profess and proclaim as Christians this morning considering where we are. What is the most urgent things? Christians speak to me often about end times. They know so much about the tribulation and the rapture and the one is post-tribulation, the one is pre-tribulation. People speak to me so often about certain prophecies and, and, and how they are surprised and how relevant it is. Brother, to you and me that knows the counsel of the Lord, what is happening in this world is no surprise. Why is it not a surprise? Because it is happening in front of our eyes, but our eyes and what we know is filtered through the knowledge that God gives us through His Word. What is the most urgent message that is to be proclaimed this morning considering these things? It is to make sure many, many, many will strive to enter. They find the gate. Few. How can people not understand that that has become the most urgent message about deception? This message this morning, as I said earlier, it's not for people who outright and publicly reject Jesus Christ. It is for the people that professes Jesus. That is on their way to hell. This morning's message is about 
profession compared to the possession. For the profession is the beginning. We are secured and sealed by the Holy Spirit until eternity. Hallelujah! But to know that we possess that is what the whole council and ordinances of God is about. For if you think about it logically, if your version of religion is basically that you did something once, even though you were sincere, if you think that is Christianity, you are deceived. Because from that argument, what we can say is, yes, I once was sincere. I remember a date. That means you can literally close your Bible. You don't need it. I'll meet you there, Lord. That's what we're actually saying. If you want to be practical, if you want to be logical. Because I did something. I profess. Let me declare the word of the Lord to you this morning. Not everybody talking about heaven is going to go there. Amen. It is not so much about attaining perfection. Because that's the process of sanctification. From the rebirth to your last breath. It is not so much a case of perfection, but it is a case of direction. A drastic new creation. And that we are to strive to enter through that gate. We are marked for life, or we are marked for death. And let's see this morning, if we can peel away and work through all this religious filth and recognize that mark before it's too late. Today the Lord has come to your house. Today salvation has come to your house and what will he find? If my daughter gets lost in a mall, I will go to management and I will ask me, Sir, can you describe your child? Can you describe your child so we can recognize her? No, I cannot. I cannot describe my daughter. I cannot describe my child. Well, sir, your child might be lost. Your child might be lost. If the Lord had to visit your house, what will he find? What will he find in that secret life that we live? You see, the sacrifices of the Lord is a living sacrifice. I have spoken about this before. So many people walk towards the cross in desperation and trauma. But you do not get on the cross and they walk away again. So many people 
stand in front of the altar. They come to the altar of the Lord. They put their money on the altar. They put stuff on the altar. That is the false religion of today. Because the only thing that needs to be on that altar is you. It's you. We strive to enter through the gate. There's nothing in your hands you can bring. There's nothing you can claim to the Lord. If it's just religion. You need to get on that altar whilst you are alive. The word of God proclaims to you this morning there's no mercy and there's no grace after you die. His mercy and His grace is now. While you have a choice and while you have breath and we know that many Many, many will come even to the altar but refuse to get on it because they're not willing to let go. They want to hold on to their secret sins. They want to hold on to their comforts. We know that the rich young ruler was so religious. The rich young ruler had everything that people would consider today as the most religious man. And yet, when he was asked to get onto the altar, he wasn't willing to let go. We are all marked. Let me ask you a question about the church you attend. You might attend a physical building. You might listen to a YouTube sermon and consider that church for your family. But have you ever looked at the Word of God pertaining to what a church is. Have you done that? Have you been? Have you used discernment? Because if you rely on your religious stuff, You do not carry the mark. A child of God is described by Jesus Christ. You are described. And if He comes to you, if the Lord comes to your house for salvation, what will He find? Would your Father recognize you? Now we know the Lord knows everything. That's not my point. Do you realize even that you are lost. Do you know what the Father is looking for? Do you know what His children even look like? And you might think, but how would I know what they look like? Because the Lord told us exactly over and over and over what a true child of God will endure 
The sufferings of a child of God. The wounds. The persecution. The separation from the world. That's why we read in the Bible, we read there that it says that the violent takes hold of the kingdom of Lord. You know why? Because it takes violence to separate yourself from this fallen world. And the question can be asked, preachers, hear me, ask your congregation, where's your marks? Where is your persecution for the sake of the Lord? Where is your suffering? Where is your separation? Where are the things that the Lord described on the way? Because it is all about following Jesus. And on the way, and on the way, as we follow our Father, not in perfection, but in belief and holding on. We are holding on. We work out our salvation with fear and tremble. Ask the congregation, do you work out your salvation with fear and tremble? You say, I don't need to listen to this preaching. You say, you don't need to. You're right, my sir, but you've heard it. What have you done with it? What have you done with it? How thick is your Bible? Because if you hop, skip and jump over scripture to what suits you, then you are proclaiming and you are under another gospel. Because iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. And the word of the Lord is sharper than any two-edged sword. Jesus Christ is warning us every day. This is a matter of urgency. Do you carry his marks? Are you carrying his marks? Is your profession and the life you're living, your secret life, the life that you do not tell the world about, compare who that is against the word of God and see if you stand. Because brother, there's no love without truth. There is no love without truth. You want to be nice to me and withhold the truth from me? I say, keep your niceness. You rather give me the truth, brother. You rather give me the truth. Brother, sister, it takes violence to separate ourselves from a fallen world. This world has been handed over to the enemy. And the urgent message this morning is about the professing Christians that wants to hold on to their religion and what they do that will fall through the cracks. That will be rejected. And you might think in your heart right now, but yeah, what about this? What about that? Because you're comparing yourself to others. When you should be comparing you, who you are, to the Lord. Because when you go through that gate, it will be you. Not with your husband, not with your wife, not with your family. You, alone. You can have zeal for the Lord in your religion. But if you don't have the wisdom that God gives you, your zeal means nothing. Nothing. You need to get on the altar, my friend. I don't care if you've been or claimed to be a Christian for 50 years, or 60 years, or one year, 
or one day. It doesn't change what God said. You need to get on to the altar. You need to know that the hands you have is no longer your hands. It belongs to Jesus. You need to know that the eyes you have and what you see no longer belongs to you. It belongs to Jesus. You need to understand that the ears that you have been given in your rebirth does no longer belong to you. And what you hear, you need to understand it belongs to Him. Your body and what you do with it no longer belongs to you. It belongs to Jesus. Your time, your strength, your energy, your heart no longer belongs to you. It belongs to Jesus. Because you can trust Him. You can trust Him. Our lives is but a vapor. Somebody asked me the other day, Dio, why do we have to die? Now we know the answer to that is the fall of man and therefore death is the wages of sin. But my response was this. The question was, why do we die? And my response and my answer was this, because life is unsurvivable. And that's dark, you still think again. Or maybe this one, that we are born next to the grave. I don't know, that's depressing. But it's true. If you compare the life and the time that the Lord has created you for a purpose in this world, compare that to eternity. It is a blip. I heard one brother in America preach this and I'm repeating it this morning and by accident I'm exactly the same age today as I heard him preach this five, six years ago and it went like this. Yesterday I was 25 and I was strong. I had my strength and I had my beauty. Today, the next week, I'm 46. My strength is going. My beauty is going. It is so quick. Compare that to eternity. Do we know how long that is? We need to get onto the altar. We need to surrender completely. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, so that those whom believe as a way to salvation. A way to salvation. Go and do a stock check. Do the right comparisons. Watch the mirror that reflects your spirit compared to the Word of God. Because His mercy is new every day. And you choose what you do with this message this morning. You condemn it. Or you start getting serious. Father, we thank you for your truth. For you are the truth. And the truth can set us free. Let us recognize our marks, Lord. For while we have breath, we can get onto that altar. For we do not know when our breath ends, Lord. You know the beginning from the end, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We worship you. We praise you. Oh, Lord, that we exhort 
one another. Keep on going. Keep on going. It is hard. But your promises are perfect. And your rewards are endless. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Nor has it entered into a man's heart what the Lord has prepared for those who love Him. Amen.